And even a good result is not the thing we want. I think a victory would just uh, let us forget the whole San Remo until now part. race. I mean, it had been on for more than 100 years. Sunday, we still go on the same cobblestones as they did in 1900, maybe two or three. So, I mean, it's also this side, it's, it's uh, something special. And uh, of course, it's maybe the hardest one day race out there. It's my type of riding, so uh, it suits me. It's, uh, that's why I like it. In 2009, Tor finished third at Roubaix. In 2010, he finished second. This year, he hopes to win while wearing the world champion's jersey, a feat accomplished by only a handful of riders in history, most recently Bernard Hinault in 1981. I tried for many, many years, uh, and now I'm 33. I've uh, been up there many times, and, uh, and uh, I think now it's time to me really show that I can win this race. and. Uh, and I also will. I'm sure I do it one day, and I hope it's, uh, it's this year. Veteran rider and classic specialist Roger Hammond has come close to that top podium spot as well. In 2004, he was sprinting for victory in the velodrome and ended up finishing third. When you've done that and been that close, then, then you know it's, it's possible. Paris-Roubaix, I have a huge amount of passion that's built up over now 30, 30 years. One of the earliest things I can remember about cycling, sitting at the kitchen table just after watching Paris-Roubaix with my parents, and I, and I just remember telling my parents, then one day I'm going to win this race. This, this is what I want to, you know, I was six years old. I didn't <laughs> the dream will never go away. I mean, OK, I'm, I'm getting old now, so the chances are getting smaller and smaller, but... Until, until that's taken away from me completely, I can, I can never, ever give it up. Johan van Summeren, also known as Shumi to his teammates, is a two-time top 10 finisher in Perry roubaix A huge asset to the team, he's unsure of whether or not he'll be able to start at all because of tendonitis. Today's ride will determine whether he has the legs to join his teammates on Sunday. And this is one race that he doesn't want to miss. It's madness. You come there with 50k an hour, fully, full gas, and then people are yelling in your ears, and yeah, it, it, it gives an adrenaline rush. Today they're doing a reconnaissance ride of the course and are joined by members of Team Rabobank along the way. It's an easy ride, and a final chance to dial in their equipment before hitting the cobblestones on Sunday. There's no doubt that the pressure is on for something big to happen this weekend. We said from the beginning of the year that the classics were our top priority, and we've got a few third places as our best results. That's not, you know, it's not living up to our capabilities or our potential. We didn't train through the winter months just to say, yeah, we had bad luck. We've ridden really well, and we've ridden really well as a team. It's just, uh, you know, the, the only part that is missing is, is, a, is a big result. We can make so many scenarios here for this race, and we, if this happens, we're going to do that, and this, and that. But eventually, something else, when something else will happen, then you have to anticipate on, on the moment. So, given that we we have so many strong riders, and we kind of 
had this idea, well, okay, we'll have multiple cards to play, and if the race goes this way, we'll use this guy, and if it goes that way, we'll, we'll go for the other guy. And it sounds like a really good idea, but I don't think it's played out to be a really good idea in the end. We can't change uh, how the races have gone, but we can change what we're gonna do Sunday. And having one leader with eight guys fully committed to, to doing everything they can for him is the way we're going to, uh, we're going to win or, or go down trying. I mean, I think the end objective of tomorrow is that we have Tor in a small group, and then he's the fastest guy there. I mean, then I hope I have at least one guy there. Yeah. You know, hopefully two, like me and Roger last year. Yeah. I think that's what we're after tomorrow, is Tor in a small group to sprint on the velodrome. I mean, really, we should be trying to put Tor in the first five, every sector, and that's everyone's job. Everyone has to take turns in making sure that he's positioned properly. If Andreas, as always, the brains on the road, I think even though we need you after the Arnberg, like you have to help position everyone into that. So, and then just see where the legs take you from there. And then Roger, you know, I think your form's getting better and better with each, you know, passing race. So tomorrow it's pretty much the same role as Andreas. Johan, we don't really know, do we? It's a little bit unsure. I mean, ideally, you're there after the Arnberg, and then that's when we can really use you to help Tor. When, you know, an attack goes, that you can pull it back. An attack goes, and you can pull it back. That, to me, that's the most effective role for you. That's the way we're going to play you, and we're just going to hope that your legs are good enough to be there. I think you just got to look after everybody that you've got, and it's the person with diamonds in their legs that's going to be your fast guy on the velodrome because that, that guy might be the guy that just for some reason is lucky. And then he's the guy that can close one gap. Yep. The most likely candidates for us to be helping you late in the race are Roger, Shumi, I'm hoping, and then Tyler, hopefully as well. And then it's up to you to win the race. Don't lose. Eh? <laughs> 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 Once again, Cancellara is the man to beat. The team knows he'll have to be watched closely. Other teams will be watching for Tor. All the more because he wears the world champion's jersey. Dry conditions make for a dusty Roubaix, and high speeds on the dangerous cobbles make for the team's first casualty. Roger Hammond, who crashes hard and can't continue in the race. With 15 kilometers to go, the lead breakaway group, which includes our own Johan van Summeren, hits the legendary cobblestone section Carrefour de l'Aube. They're 45 seconds in the lead, and the team give Johan the green light to attack. He puts the hammer down and pulls away from his breakaway companions in a solo bid for the win. When Cancellara enters the same section, he too goes full gas but Tor goes with him. With five kilometers to go, Johan only has 40 seconds on his pursuance and a slowly leaking rear tire. His girlfriend watches on as Cancellara gets closer and closer. His lead is dwindling. It's now or never. Cancellara and the remnants of the break close in on Johan. But it's too late. There's 
more cause for celebration. Johan proposes to his girlfriend right then and there. It's not about one person or another person. We played every card we had, and that's how we won. It just took us a little while to prove it, but man, like that's when you prove it, you prove it big. In all the races, the team performance was good, and all the results were shit. And we didn't knew the answer for that, and I still don't know the answer for that. And I also don't care anymore, because now we won a classic, and this is nice. It's my dream. <laughs> Door, yeah. it's, it's normal when you have that, that white jersey with the stripes on, everybody's watching you, so it's, it's, it's more difficult and maybe I could profit from that. I'm glad he's also, the yeah, team is happy with me. This is really, really something else. It couldn't end better. We also had a lot of pressure. Uh, I mean, the team had a great start of the year, but uh, I think people expected more in the classic. And now we really show them that uh, we are one of the best teams uh, out there. So uh, we're going to celebrate this. Stop the tour of California.